Hello there, I hope you are keeping well as the holiday mood sets in. Now today we bring you yet another development of global interest. A development that is attracting the attention of both local and international clients. A development that has been put up by a daring international investor. I'm talking about the Global Trade Center Nairobi that is changing the skyline of not only Westlands but the entire city of Nairobi. But before we proceed, here are some highlights about the project. Global Trade Center in Nairobi's Westlands is actually a city within a city. It's going to change also the value of the whole area. Iconic changing the city's skyline and attracting global attention. You can live here and work here without having to go elsewhere. It's a one-stop shop where you have business, hotel, mall. We have an open plan living room. Why local and international investors are eyeing GTC Nairobi? Great, our journey through the Global Trade Center Nairobi begins here. The development has apartments and the apartments are in four towers. There is a shopping mall here, then a hotel, JW Marriott. The hotel is housed in a 37-story building. Then there is the GTC Tower, quite tall. This is where offices are located. The GTC Tower, a 42-story building, is the tallest building in East and Central Africa. Let's go. Engineer Patrick Muiru is a civil and structural engineer and a founder member of BDK Consultants who have been supervising the construction of this project. This is a very iconic structural work because it has very, very serious heights of 45 stories and in some of the site we had very poor soil and we had to do a very big site investigation and do piling. Also, the structures on this site some are very large spans, like the bridge you see over there. It has a span of 38 meters, is a pedestrian bridge, and the pedestrian bridge, we have two of them, spanning between the west and the east plot. My role in this project is to ensure integrity of the designs and compliance with the international and the local standards. So we had to redo a very serious integration into the design that was done in China to make sure that the project and the elements are safe under the local conditions. GTC Nairobi is an investment worth 440 million US dollars. In Kenya shillings, that is about 45 billion. It is a project of Avic International Real Estate Kenya Limited, whose mother company is Avic International that is based in China. James Kitoho from Triad Architects, who are among the architects in this project, explains how the design work was mobilized. The project was a competition, an international design competition that uh, the client, Avic, wanted to, to get the best out of both worlds. They were investors from China, but they needed local input. And so for that reason, we first started participating in a design competition among four architects. The best of the local architects and the best of the architects from China formed a collaborative team to develop the concept. Symbolic of the theme of this series, Daring Abroad, there was a lot of exchange of expertise between both countries as the daring clients from China sought to come up with an unmatched masterpiece. It was interesting because after they did the appointment of consultants, we had a lot of col uh, 
correspondence between us as at a professional level, between the Kenyan architects, the Kenyan engineers, and the engineers from China. The architects was from Beijing, and so a lot of it we leveraged on technology, going on uh, online discussions, uh, our architects visiting with them in China. And to that extent, our input at that time was to ensure that it is appropriate to our local conditions, whether it's a planning regulations, whether it is environmentally sound, that is our input. And then, of course, the local code, make sure that there is a local code for this building. Fast forward, and the project is 90% complete. On the apartment side, there are 514 units, including one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom units. The office tower that comprises 42 floors is almost complete. The JW Marriott Hotel, the first of its kind in East Africa, is expected to be completed by the end of the year 2022. The hotel will have 315 guest rooms, 51 hotel service apartments, and seven conference facilities. This is actually an international satellite town where we can communicate very well with the rest of the world. One can access this big hotel through a helipad that we have on the hotel. I'm looking forward to one's landing on that uh, helipad. <laughs> there is a ballroom, a double height ballroom. I have never seen such a large ballroom in the country. It is also that meter span, and uh, I think it will be a source of entertainment in this uh, city for uh, relaxation. There is also the retail area, and where we are now is a green area with a swimming pool, and it will be a very good internalized source of um, stress relief. The project's proximity to the Nairobi Expressway is a game changer. Besides, there was meticulous consideration of environmental and social issues. The movement of vehicles around here to ensure that uh, the project itself will have no negative impact to the surrounding. Most of the roads were designed and uh, widened to ensure that uh, the traffic flow will actually improve when uh, at the end of the project. With the expected high water usage here, Water management was another environmental consideration. The technologies which have been used in this building is basically to ensure that there is minimal usage of water in the apartments, in the bathrooms, in the offices, in the hotel. So everything here is to conserve the water that is uh, used in this building. The other area of emphasis was on how to save on energy consumption. Everything has gone for the modern technologies of saving energy. LED systems is what has actually been used all over. When it comes to saving energy bills, all the bathrooms from the hotel, the apartments, will be using solar energy to heat the water. And basically, this one is going to reduce, to contribute measurably to the low bills, electricity bills at the end of every month. The orientation of the buildings themselves is to ensure that uh, the orientation is east to west and to ensure that uh, you are able to have light, natural light to your house from 6.30 in the morning up to 6.30 in the evening. So you don't need to put your lights on. You are able to use natural uh, light. GTC is considered a smart city. The other thing which was done here is uh, the issue of greening the project. That green area has also a lot of social amenities. There is a playground for the children. You can actually be able to have parties. So it's a, an expansive area where you can be able to have several community activities for the residents. There is a gym, there is a jogging track within the green zone. At the end of the day, your uh, personal health is taken care of. The Chief Administrative Secretary for Public Service and Gender, Beatrice Elachi, who is a former Speaker of Nairobi County Assembly and a former nominated Senator, sees this project as a game changer. And from the governance perspective, she says this is an example of how collaboration among nations 
coupled with proper planning can foster development. Just looking now the beauty of it and how it's going to support many, many Kenyans. And not just Kenyans, across East Africa, Central Africa. I think everyone will want to come and see this icon that is just sitting quietly in the suburbs of Westlands. And it's going to change also the value of the whole area. So that is one thing we, as a country, as a government, I think we will always appreciate. This centre, above all, is expected to become a tourist attraction. When you look at the massive buildings that we have around here, the apartments that we have, the business building that we have, the mall that will be there, I am trying to imagine uh, roughly 20,000 people in a day will be evolving around here in different ways and different businesses and different investments, different meetings. People will come even just for tourism, even Kenyans. Young people will want to come and see this skyscraper that is hanging here. Can I go at the top? Can I see what is happening? If you want to see the whole of Nairobi, you just know, walk to GTC and you'll see the whole of Nairobi. When you look around in the Westlands area, you realize the traveling Kenyan has gone out, come back, and their desires and their aspirations are high. And they want to live in the same apartment they lived in in Netherlands, in England, in New York, they want to find a similar set of comfort. So these apartments are not primary for the, for the foreigner. It's actually a Kenyan with that aspiration. The only difference between this one and the, Ameri the New York one is that our, at, our weather is very comfortable. So you, are, you can do it in two ways. Either you're buying it to live in it, which is okay, or you are buying it as, a, as an investment to rent it out to the visiting clientele who come and go, to, who expect to find the same comfort. With that, we take a short break. When we return, just what is the socioeconomic impact of this project? Most of the materials in this project are local. Also ahead, we have an open plan living room. A walk through the showroom. Stay with us. Welcome back. Today we are featuring the Global Trade Center Nairobi, a mixed-use development that comprises residential units, a shopping mall, a 32-story five-star hotel, and a 42-story tower that houses offices, among other facilities. Most of the materials in this project are local. That is to make sure that even our country gains from the investments like this one. For example, we had a lot of steel reinforcement, about 28,000 tons, and all these steel or reinforcement was locally procured. There are some areas where we had to import structural steel, that is the eye beams and the columns, the big sections you see being used in bridges. All our cement was obtained from local manufacturers. Not a drop of cement was imported. In this project, quality control is key and the Kenya Bureau of Standards has been involved to make sure there is compliance. We have rejected a lot of steel on this site because this is a high quality building and we cannot afford to make a mistake. So, as engineers, I am sure we have achieved the quality that assures us of compliance with international and Kenyan standards. In the field of engineering, this development has employed civil, mechanical and electrical engineers among others. This site has been the source of employment for about 18 engineers continuously. That is the local engineers. Surely the Chinese have also their own engineers. They have their own design office and I think there has been a team of about 30. The other thing that uh, has been undertaken over time in this project, which is not very common in other projects, 
I like the developer because he has been taking up students from polytechnics, from universities, for a mentorship program. It's not just an attachment or internship. Students are mentored here for six months, one year, and by the time they come out, they pick the skills from uh, international engineers and our national engineers. They work very closely together, and uh, you find them getting better jobs after one year, two years. The fact that we collaborated with others who have done similar projects, there was a deep sense of knowledge transfer from the architect to the fundi who was laying the tiles because they did things that probably they had not done before but they were challenged by the contractor because of the scale of the building it was an international bid the contractor was was a chinese contractor who has done bigger buildings like this so supervising it and our own kenyan fundis laying the tiles laying the electricals i believe there was a serious uh, learning nikiingia kwa site sisi sema nilikuwa vinye niko sahi yani sile skills zenye nilikuwa nazo ni ndogo sana ukikombea na sahi za inaweza toka hii hapa kwa hii site ende nje kwa kampuni nyingine na za chukuliwa tu tena ni supervise hiyo kampuni nyingine sababu ya skills niko nazo ni mingi niko na skills niko na experience ya kutosha GTC Nairobi has in general been a source of over 2000 direct jobs and over 5000 indirect jobs. After completion, still the same same youths are going to embroil in the apartments, in the hotel, in the offices, in the shopping mall. So in terms of jobs which are going to be created during even the operation stage, they would be far higher than those ones who are actually working at the moment during the construction period. So when this project is going actually to start operations, the number of Kenyans that are going to benefit out of this project is quite high. From here, the 10 engineers who have been working on this site and five more who have been working in the consultancies will be able to transfer the technology we have acquired here to their trainees and those members of the institution of engineers of Kenya, those aspiring to be registered, and also to the sites where they are employed. One of the issues I have learned is that detailing is a very essential area in structural engineering. In China, I have gone there and seen their training at the polytechnic level is very high. The technicians are quite many. Here we have very few technicians compared with those in China. Let's now shift gears and walk you through one of the showrooms. This is the three bedroom apartment showroom. So Alex, this is our three bedroom executive apartment. Uh -huh. Look the at it. Three bedroom, it. Huh? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's very inviting. The space is warm, right. but it also oozes excellence. Uh -huh. You can I see. I like the colors. Thank yeah, you. I like the colors. They were tastefully designed. Mm -hmm. We have the best uh, interior designers uh -huh. who came in and put everything together. Uh -huh. Let me take you to the kitchen. It's a state of the art fully fitted German kitchen and the accessibility, it's very easy. You can be having all this countertop and the washing area is separate. Mm. So it makes uh, working in the kitchen very easy. Okay. And you can also communicate with people in the living room yeah. and the dining. Quite adjacent. Very adjacent. They're seeing what you are doing mm. in the kitchen. Alex, this is the master. Mm -hmm. As you get in, you notice the floor has changed. Yeah. This is because we want you to feel warm when you're getting to bed. Mm -hmm. Also, the colors have been very carefully selected to mm -hmm. give you a feeling of tranquility, serenity, so that mm -hmm. as you wind down your day, you just feel so relaxed okay. in our GTC apartments. Mm -hmm. And then the floor to ceiling, windows again, bringing in so much natural lighting. You get the view of the skyline of Nairobi. Yeah, I can see Nairobi from here. So they have the sensor and the kind of uh, finishing that we have is very high end, uh -huh. you can notice. I can see. Hmm. 
Let me open the the other one for you. This slide, all of them slide. Eh? All okay. of them slide. Yeah. So this is the drawer compartment. Yeah. Oh, you can it, see. They made a good display here for the lady. <laughs> Absolutely. For the lady of the house. For the lady of the house. <laughs> okay. well, this is the bathroom. Mm. We have collar sinks. These are the best in the market. Mm -hmm. His and hers. Okay. And the mirrored cabinets make it easy for you to store your products. And we have um, the bathroom just there. And then there. We have the bathtub. Great. All with a view. So as we move along, mm -hmm. over here we have the second bedroom uh -huh. and this is the third bedroom, which okay. is in suit. Mm -hmm. Are they the same size? No, they're slightly different. Uh -huh. This is smaller, this is larger. Okay. Great, the apartments and office spaces are already up for grabs. I am appealing to Africa. This is one place you can come, invest in the companies that we need. Come in, invest in into this, and now find yourself investing into Kenya. And so it's not just for Kenya, but it's for us in Africa to feel proud that we can have such a project. I don't think we have any other, maybe in South Africa and maybe in Egypt, and, but within Central and East, I want to tell Rwanda, I want to tell uh, DRC, uh, and many other countries, come into Kenya, we have GDC, it's ready. The biggest value of this project is that it is actually a city within a city. It is a, like an independent village with a very high proximity to the city. Down the road, down the country, down the cities, especially with this county government, I want to see a mini GTC in the counties. Because I also want to say, I will move out of here to go to, to do some work in Kisi. I need a comfort. I don't want again to, to find that I'm struggling. I was struggling to come back. I should be comfortable enough to do my business wherever I go. It, has impact, it will impact the cities around East Africa as well. Great, with that we come to the end of the show. It's been an interesting journey through the Global Trade Center Nairobi. And as the professionals who've been involved in this project have put it, it is a landmark, and not just a landmark, a landmark that is changing the face of Westlands and the entire city of Nairobi. Not to forget the fact that the Nairobi Expressway has added great value. On behalf of the entire team that made this production possible, my name is Alex Chamada and see you again next time.